Shut up, compressor. Yeah, low shoot from Mars. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the build series for the Zukimura F4G Wild Weasel. Now, I realize it's been a hot minute since I've been doing build videos, and there are all kinds of reasons for that, but essentially it just boils down to 2022 is a fuck. It's kind of the, the TLDR version. So anyway, back at it, working on the Zukimura F4G, and... I wanted to run through just a little bit of my thinking on the kit and the subject before we really dive into the build. So to understand my love of the F4G Wild Weasel, you have to wind the clock back a little more than 30 years ago to Operation Desert Storm. I was 11 years old and was already, you know, a bit of an airplane dork. Knew every aircraft involved in the conflict, uh, you know, knew about the stealth fighter, all that sort of a thing. And one of my favorite aircraft through, throughout the entire thing was the F4G. Not only did, it, did I uh, really love the, the hill scheme camo, the you know overall gunship gray with the lighter with the lighter gray up front and on the tail and whatnot. Uh, I loved the I loved the Wild Weasel mission, the you know hunting enemy radar. It just it's it was unique. It was different from what everything else was doing, and that made it fascinating to me. And as I've gotten older and I kind of look back at where my interests lie with aircraft, basically it boils down to this. If it was something in the U.S. inventory in 1991, in January of 1991, I'm probably a fan of it. Uh, you know, I look at my favorite aircraft from the modern era, and it's literally F-4G, A-6 Intruder, A-7 Corsair II, um, you know, the F-15E Strike Eagle made it essentially made its combat debut in Desert Storm. So did the F-A-18D Hornet uh, on the Marine side doing Fast Fac. Like, all those things, interested, a fan. AH-1W Super Cobra, A-64 Apache, A-10 Warthog. List goes on and on and on and on. But, uh, yeah, basically that was kind of like where all of my essentially core preferences were set, I think, was in Desert Storm. And... So when I found out that Zuki Mira was finally, or somebody, anybody was finally getting around to doing a G, a wild weasel, uh, several years ago, I was over the moon because the only other option to that point in 148th was an ancient Hasegawa kit that was literally as old as I am. And I've tried to build it, and it's, you know, when you look at it compared to, even compared to the Academy kit, it's like, do I have to really... It just, it didn't light my fire, and so I figured, I'll wait, somebody will get around to it. And then all the manufacturers came out with Phantoms, and, oh my god, getting them to do a late Phantom with the slats, with the long nose, I don't know why this is so hard. All the interesting foreign service Phantoms are long noses with slatted wings, except for the Japanese, but we got those already, so... Um, you know, if you want to build a Greek phantom in the Aegean Ghost Scheme, if you want to build a Turkish phantom, if you want to build some of the Israeli ones, like there's, there are so many out there that aren't covered yet, and it's really frustrating. And the Wild Weasel was one of them, and it was always my favorite. And so, when I found out that it was like the first of the slat wings that Zuki Mirror was launching, I was like, yes, fuck yes. Um, and then I just had to wait like four years for it to actually land in my lap. But when it came out, um, I got two of them from a Lionheart Hobby. I told Rudy, you know, two of them, you know, let me know. And he was literally, like, texting me, like, the truck's here, they're, they're arrived. And I, like, literally drove down there the second that they were in. Uh, that's just how much I'm a fan of the Wild Weasel. Now, I do want to build a hill scheme, Desert Storm, you know, loaded up with four harms or, like, two harms and Mavericks, something like that. Very badly. That is definitely on the list. But I don't want to build it first. I want to get to know the I want to essentially build the kit, get to know it again, because I built an F4D several years ago. But I want to understand it. I want to give aftermarket time to kind of bubble along too. Because I think as these long nose slat wing F4s start coming out more, you're going to see aftermarket pick up 
the slack on some of the things that they haven't maybe gotten to yet. So all of that kind of floating around in my mind. I figured that's all cool, but I still want to build an F4G. And I am going to kind of follow the lead of the kit and do one in Euro 1 camo. I'm not going to do the kit one because honestly, like, they chose, if you look at reference photos, they chose one of the really boring uh, F4Gs. Like, yeah, it's got the cool gray shark mouth, but it's not faded. It's not dirty. It's just clean and bland. And it looks like something you would see on the side of a Hasegawa box, to be honest. But fortunately, references are what they are. And I have found an F4G from the same sort of era, same part of the world, etc., that I absolutely adore. Uh, it, it is messy. It is faded. The paint's all weird colors. And it's going to be a blast to, to, get, to get done. But I'm planning to kind of like move quickly through it. I'm using Edward Harms. I'm using probably some aftermarket exhaust. I've got the Zuki Mira replacement wheels, just because I hate gluing plastic halves together. It's always a pain in the ass uh, to get the grooves looking right again. I've got some aftermarket seats, and I've got some special stuff for the cockpit that I can't really reveal just yet, but um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes too. So that's basically my plan. I want to kind of speed run through it, but I'm bringing some extra things into it. I'm planning on picking up the Reed Air Publishing Speed Hunter. I don't know which one they prefer to be called. Uh, they're doing an early Weasels decal sheet. I'm planning on picking that up, if only for the insignia and stencils and things like that, because they don't do the exact one I'm doing. But they've got all the little pieces, except for literally the AF number on the bat, on the tail. So lots to come on all fronts. But for now, I wanted to kick off this video, since I'm waiting for some stuff for the cockpit, with the stuff that's hanging underneath, the the reason that the Wild Weasel exists, and that is the AGM-88 Harm Missile, which is funny, 30 plus years after Desert Storm, it's still making headlines as it's uh, just beating the fucking shit out of Russian radars right now. So I figured it was fitting to get the Harms up and running, and if nothing else, showcase you know how great the Edward Harm is as an aftermarket item, and how well thought out it is compared to a lot of other aftermarket missiles and rockets and whatnot, even the ones from Edward. Like this one, there was some engineering, uh, you know, engineering brain work happening when they were designing these. So without further ado, let's turn the camera around and let's start working on some harms. Instead of the usual trapes through the cockpit, I'm going to start this build out with the armament, specifically two AGM-88 harms. Now, Zukimura gives you two harms on Sprue J, which is new for the F4G. So you got the halves of the harms here and the pylons. And the pylons have a actually pretty interesting little like cross-shaped plug for uh, going up into the main pylons. But if you look at the other side, where they mount to the missile, it's just these two little kind of wedge-shaped nubbins. And they plug into these little wedge-shaped depressions, which... Eh, that is far from my favorite way of mounting things. Plus, I'm not a big fan of joining missile body halves and then having to sand that seam and keep it in the round and all that stuff. I'd probably still suck it up and just deal with it, except several years ago, I played around with harms in 148 scale, and I discovered that the aftermarket ones from Edward are quite possibly my favorite aftermarket weapons I have ever encountered. Now, what makes these so cool? So, first of all, there is no seam sanding to be happening here. This is all just good, nice resin, not, uh, not warped as you often find with their missiles. These things have enough beef that they hold up on their own. The rear fins are all already attached. They have very easy to remove uh you know poor stubs thing poor stub things back here it almost 3d printed practically the way that it, it seems to be molded which is awesome the little fins come off easily as well i only had one of them warp so not a big deal just stuck it in some hot water and they just plug into these holes like this and it's a pretty secure mount and it's still got some play but 
you know, put in there with some super glue. You can kind of line it up on the rear fins and get the alignment as good as it needs to be. The real stunner with these is with the harm mount. It looks basically like this, right? This thing goes onto the main pylon. But how do you get these together? Well, that's simple. You take the missile, you start up, up here rather, sorry, and you just slide it back along until these pieces kind of hook over like right here. And then look at that. The missile is mounted. It's ready to go. Sweet. And so the cool thing about that is we can get everything done. We can literally just fix these things to the pylons. Take the missiles on and off as much as we want. We can take them off for transport. We can take them off for handling. We can take them off for any reason whatsoever. Even if we just want to put them somewhere else, take pictures of them. We can easily do that too. So that right there makes these my favorites. The only thing I'm not sure about is the ass end is kind of, yeah. I mean, I know that there's a, there's a PE ring that goes on the outside for these helps a bit, but I don't know. The ass ends of missiles are kind of the thing that always seems to get left out in the cold. So, so next up, it is a matter of getting some shit glued in place. And for this, I'm just going to get some good old Loctite ultra gel CA. I like this stuff because it does its thing fast. It doesn't really fuck around. It doesn't spread more than you really want it to. So, all good traits in a fine super glue. A little bit on this. And just like that, that's all there is to it. Okay, so here we are with the fully built up AGM-88 Harm. Everything is looking good. It's pretty much ready for primer. Got the funneled mounting bracket. It goes on just like so and kind of sticks, right? And I've gone ahead and built up the F4G's inboard pylons. So these are the ones that the harms go on, at least on the Zuki Mirror Kit. They've got uh, wing tanks and multiple ejector racks for some ungodly reason uh, for the for the external hard points. You would think they'd have, you know, beast mode with all four harms, but i sure they don't. Anyway, as I was working these up, a couple things come to mind. First of all, the big mounting lugs for the Sidewinder rails have got to go. They were not there on the Wild Weasels. So just kind of snip them off. Once this gets painted over, these will just be little holes. It's fine. Another thing I would note is that the uh, sway braces suck. They are just garbage. They have a pretty decent attachment mechanism going up into the pylon, but then down here, they have additional ones sticking out the bottom. For I, I don't know why. Because these mounting adapters for the harms are supposed to sit pretty close to flush against the pylon. You know, they're not entirely flush. They're not, you know, no daylight between them, but they are pretty snug up there. And so having shit sticking down from these and then the sway braces themselves stick down a ways, fine for bombs, not at all good for these adapters. But once all this is put together, everything looks like that, right? And then I kind of lined up these little lugs on the adapters with the pylons, looked at some reference photos to figure out sort of, you know, how far back, how far forward, etc. And with that and some holes drilled, it's literally a press fit. And then we take the harm. Literally just slide it on like that and boom, armament. Sweet. Okay, so now it is time to go ahead and do some priming. And for this, I'm going to be using some Moto MK12 Surfacer. This stuff is very similar to Mr. Surfacer 1500. Uh, it takes a lot more thinner. Like, I just, I've got 
enough to the point where I finally just put some uh, you know, little metal balls in this for mixing. But when I picked it up just now, it was literally, you know, down here, if that, with primer and the rest, all they have to hear was thinner. This stuff likes a lot of thinner, but once you get it thin to the right consistency and spray it, it's phenomenal shit. So let me get that loaded up and we'll start some spraying. These really do look a lot meaner once you get rid of that uh, Edward dark gray resin look. And they actually start getting some sort of, I guess, opacity on them. Now, one thing that's going to annoy you about this entire kit is there is a little bit of texture on the Zukimura surface. And it's not bad, but... You know, I think it needs a coat of primer and then some sanding of that primer to really be um, knocked down effectively. And so... I didn't do that when I did the D, or I didn't do it as diligently as I should have. And it just annoyed me the whole build. So, as this primer dries, we're going to come back in here with some sanding sponges and just, you know, smooth things out a little tiny bit. Alright, we're running out of places for my hand to go. So, I think this is a good time to move on to the next one. Okay, so for now, the harm work continues. I'm getting some paint on these things. Uh, using Tamiya LP4 white. It has become one of my favorite whites. It's pretty nice and neutral as far as whites go. Uh, it's not too dirty, but it's also not too gleamy. Kind of strikes a nice balance. And it does cover well, but, you know, as with any white, it's got to build up over time. So. Getting there, just feel like I'm doing a million fucking coats. But it is coming along. Anyway, I'm not going to make you all watch this whole shit show. So we'll pick back up when it's time to paint something else. Alright, now it's time to put some green on the LAU 118s that are sort of the launcher adapter rails for the harms. And these are supposed to be RLM 71, which I don't have, but it's basically, it's a dark, drabby green. And I want it to stand out a bit from our SEA dark green. So I am using mainly this uh, Swedish Army olive green, which definitely has a more drabby tone to it. Had a little bit of other shit in here, but that's kind of the main color. And looking at this as I spray it, uh, yeah, it's gonna get some, it's gonna get some action throughout this build. Probably not as a primary color, but certainly as a supporting color, as something to mix into some of the other greens, as something to do sandwich shading with, and all that good stuff. Because that is a great tone. And the reason this was a little bit white beforehand. Uh, a, I was spraying the harms and using this to hold them. B, give it a little something lighter so that the uh, this darker green doesn't just completely swallow it all into the pit of darkness. Okay, I think those are looking pretty good. Okay, so before I hit the next step, which is taking the harms, which are now painted white, and painting them camouflage gray, which is just slightly not white, I want to go ahead and touch on not the harms themselves, but the LAU 118s that they rode on, which are these things. So basically these things mount the, they mount the harms and they plug into the pylons, and they're basically sort of the launcher adapter things that go on every single thing that carries harms. Now, I did not realize this until this morning, but there were two different flavors of them. There was the 
LEU-118V1A, which was used by the Navy. So Hornets, Intruders, Corsair 2s, things like that. And there is the LEU-118V2A, which is a little bit longer and all that kind of stuff, right? Like you see the back there, definitely longer. And was used by the Air Force, is used by the Air Force. Now, this is fun because, you know, I already went through the effort of painting these things. Uh, it's, you know, not that hard to go back and change. But at the same time, looking at reference photos, every single reference photo that I saw of an F4G pack and harms, let's go ahead and get this loaded up, showed something kind of like this, where the end of the launcher doesn't reach into the rear fin area. You know, and it's like if you slide this as far back as you can on this little mount thing here, it gets close, but, you know, it's never in the fins. It's always in front of it, every F4G. And when you look at the Air Force launcher, the, the V2A, you put it on, it's bumping into the fin area. Like, if you compare these two, there's some definite further back action taking place, right? And so, I don't know, you know, Edward doesn't always get things sized properly. I mean, look at their multiple ejector racks. But at the same time, this seemed pretty different. So I went and started searching the Google to try to find good information on the 118 versions. Not super successful there. You can find like the same like three pictures and whatnot. But I started searching for other vehicles or other aircraft carrying harms, specifically F-16s, and every F-16 photo you see has a longer one. You can see it going back into the fin area like this is, right? And this is way far forward. If we pull this back further like that, it's in the fins. And the F-16s, Greek F-16s, US F-16s, etc., show that. The F-4G very distinctly shows before the fins. So, even though this is the quote-unquote Navy adapter, it seems to be what it used, and I don't know why. I don't know if the F4G just, like, predates when the V2 came along. Uh, the V1 and the V2 are not interoperable. You can't take a V2 thing and put it on a thing that uses the V1, which is fucking stupid. But, yeah, hey, that's the military-industrial complex for you, right? So, long story short, I'm going with the shorter ones because they match what I see in the references, and... I see nothing like the longer launchers on F4Gs. And to me, the shorter one, that puts it right into fuck it close enough territory. Yay. Okay, now it is time to go ahead and make the harms camouflage gray. So FS36622, this is uh, basically the Southeast Asia camouflage light gray that F4s and things like that wore on the underside. Also the color of a whole bunch of missiles, including the harm. So, here we go. Now, I'm using the longer LAUs as my handles, kind of. They give me a great way to paint a whole bunch of stuff and not necessarily have to hold the missile, right? First, I'm going to get these, this area here so I don't have to worry about that. Again, this is MRP-104. Light gray. The reason for the white underneath this is, in my experience with this color, it has coverage uh, that really sucks. <laughs> and so it's easier to put it down over a white than to try it over anything dark because it's just really hard to build up any opacity with it. So, since it's so close to white, and I have plenty of whites that build better, let's go ahead and do that. This SEA camo gray is so light that a lot of people think it's white anyway. Especially when you bring it in with really dark, rich tones. That tonal crush just beats the shit out of this and makes it look white. And now it's time to go ahead and paint the yellow bands on the harms. Got some MRP yellow loaded up in the cup. Make sure we're spraying good. Got a lot of tape, because even though overspray shouldn't be an issue, I somehow always manage to make it an issue. It's 
it's always the really fun part, isn't it? The removing of the masks. So I just want to spend all this effort masking off a little band, taking, you know, half an hour, whatever, to mask it all, and then it comes off in the span of a minute. What a silly, silly hobby. But, yellow band on a harm. All right, so now we're into the fun bit of adding stencils to the AGM 88s. Edward does a very nice job of giving you a lot of good stencils to make these things look uh, nice and colorful. The yellow, again, is paint. The rest of this is, so far, just all stencil work. And I'm adding these red bands to the tail fin area. A little bit of Mr. Mark Setter. I'm just figuring out how to hold these fucking things. Anyway, this whole thing is super boring, so let me go ahead and wrap these stencils up and we'll be back to continue playing with them in other more interesting to watch ways. Okay, so while we're waiting for the harms and their decals to set up a little bit so I can move on to the next side, what can I do to keep the ball moving? Well, I'm going to start working on the chaff and flare pods on the pylons. These are supposed to be silver. And I'm going to be painting these with some ammo steel, which is my favorite brush paintable metallic out there, basically. So this is just establishing coats at this point. Get some shit on it and come back and clean it up later. Because ammo is pretty thin. The odds of getting it all in one go are not the best. So just get something down. Good thing is, it's nice and thin so you don't get the chonky thing that a lot of other metallics can do. Oh, scale 75. Next time I build one of these, I'll be sure to paint these off the pylons, and then I'll go ahead and add them in after the fact. Probably would have been a lot smarter to do here, too, but alas, that's how we learn shit. So the decals have set, and overall they're looking pretty good, except for one thing. And that is, oh my god, these stencils are super black. Super prominent. Way more so than they actually look on the one-to-one -one actual missile. So, I want to fade them back. And what I'm going to do is take some of the same MRP-104 SEA Gray and just very lightly put some on top. So basically, just like so. It's still there, but oh my god, that looks a million times better. <laughs> like, not even comparable. I mean, come on, which would you choose? Well, hell, let's finish the side first, shall we? Okay. We've got that versus that. Definitely choosing this one. So let me finish misting these. And after that, I mean, we're really close to being able to just, you know, seal this stuff in and start doing some of the detail washes and finishing off the harms. Sweet. Okay, so now that the stencils have all set and been sealed, it is time to move into 
a little bit of weathering, not too much. Harms are generally fairly clean missiles, but as you can see here, you know, we want to pick some stuff out, have these uh, stand out while they're on the pylons under the aircraft. So for this, I'm starting with guns, Mr. Weathering Color, multi-gray. Gray is a color that goes a long way on top of white, or in this case, camouflage gray, which is basically the same thing as white. So as you can see, you just touch and it runs on its own. Come on. Mostly runs on its own. Okay. So there we've got all the fun multi gray put down looking pretty decent and as it all kind of cleans up we get something a lot more delineated like this still got a few areas I need to come in here and play cleanup on but that's about I think where we're gonna end up or pretty close to it okay so one of the last steps of the harm work is getting the launchers and the pylons cleared and the missiles too. So for the pylons, I want to use a nice dead flat and I'm going to be using MRP 127 matte clear. This stuff is pretty good at unglossing things with a uh, lack of fucks for lack of a better term. not quite GX113, but it also doesn't require thinning and mixing and all that stuff, and I'm lazy. Once it, once it deads out, that does the part quite nicely. All right. Now the missiles are going to be fun. Um, I'm thinking of doing a multiple clear type of thing for these where parts of them are like shinier than others. Parts of them are dead flat. Um, yeah. So let's get to it, shall we? And just trying to introduce sheen variants into the equation. And next, speaking of sheen variants, it's time to return the... Actually, you know what? I've got some other stuff to paint with the matte clear. Let me do that, and we'll come back and tackle the pylons. All right, now we're back with some MRP-126 semi-matte. That semi-matte is going to help us get these pylons over the, over the uh, finish line. They're already pretty much semi matte, but and these aren't fully done. Like when I come around to do the oil work on the rest of the aircraft. When all is said and done, they'll get to play in there too. But for the most part, for our purposes right now, they're in a happy spot. And man, if y'all want rabbit holes, uh, the state of all the colors on Euro 1 camouflage. are uh, the hottest of hot messes. Like, even just what the colors are supposed to be, 
seems frustrating because you have some that were uh, this. I think it's thirty four oh seventy nine, is the SEA dark green Euro one dark green whatever. That was kind of like the official dark green, but then some of them got painted with olive drab, and then it seems like some of them got painted with both or mixes of them or just whatever dark green they had on hand and yeah total mess uh but for these you know going with some 34079 just good old dark green same with the drop tanks even though they're kind of battered beat up a bit so overall i think this is looking pretty solid arms look nice I think I might do a... Give this section the semi match treatment. Just one more bit of sheen variance. For the kids. Right. And with that, all we gotta do is get these bastards on. Like so. This one goes with the green one. Attention to that. There is one completed Harmon pylon assembly. And the next one. So this is basically first blood on the Zuki Mira kit. And I think this will be a good wrap up for this first part of the build installment. So there you have it. Two AGM 88 harms, Edward harms on Zuki Mira pylons. We've got a bunch of different color tones going on here. I think everything looks pretty good. I like the sheen variants, um, the missiles particularly. They've got a nice little something for everybody going on now i'm gonna go take some pictures and move on to other elements of the build so thanks for watching uh, i know it's been a while since i've had regular build videos going on hopefully that's gonna change here in the uh, present and the immediate future so again thanks for watching look forward to uh, building this f4g wild weasel with y'all later